In this video, I will give you a simple explanation about the notion of LTI and convolution in IntuitiveWay. First, LTI denotes linear and time invariant. In the signal processing, this term indicates the properties of a system. So, LTI system means that the system is a linear system and also a time invariant system. Then, what is a linear system? A system that has two properties is called a linear system. First property is called scaling or homogeneity. Scaling or homogeneity property means following. Let's assume a system of which output is y1t for the input signal x1t. For a scaled input alpha x1t, if the output is also scaled with the same amount alpha, like alpha y1t, then the system has the scaling property. Let me give you an example. If the system output is given by yt equals to x3t, which means when the, when the input signal is x1t, then the output signal is x1t. And this is y1t. If scaled input alpha x1t enter this system, it will give the output alpha x13t, which is the same as alpha y1t. So this is scaling system. Let me think of another real-world example. Let's look at this vending machine which has just one product. The price is $1 for a one can. If you think that money is input signal and vending machine is a system and the output is product, you can see that if you put $1, you get one product. And if you put $10, you can get 10 products and so on. Simply, this vending machine is a system that has scaling property. Second property is additivity. Additivity means that, as you can see from its name, the added output comes when the added input is entered. Formally, let the output for uh, input x1t is y1t. And for input x2t, output is y2t. Here, for added input x1t plus x2t, the output from a system that has additivity is y1t plus y2t. Also, we can state two properties together by superposition. Superposition property means that if the input is alpha x1t plus beta x2t, then the output of system that means superposition is alpha y1t plus beta y2t. That is, superposition property includes both scaling and additivity. Now, let's talk about TI. TI also refers to the properties of the system, which means time invariant. This term literally means that it does not change with time, but in fact, the time in which the output appears depends on the time the input is entered. Let me give you an intuitive example of the TI system, the computer. When you click on the icon with your mouse, the reaction of the computer to the click is always the same. But the reaction will appear only after you click the mouse, like this. Formally, let's say that the output for an input x1t of a system is y1t. When a time delayed signal x2t, like this, x1t minus t0, is input. If the output y2t is equal to y1t minus t0, then this system can be called time invariant system. For example, consider a system where yt equals to x3t. Let y1t be, uh, be the output for x1t. Then y1t equals to x13t. At this time, when time delayed signal x2t, x1t minus t0 is input, then x13t minus t0 is the output of this system. And this is not equal to y1t minus t0. 
y1 t minus t0 is x1 3 t minus t0 thus this system is not ti this may be a little bit confusing but it's but it's easy to understand if you think of that the system turns t into 3t in signal processing we deal with only ltr systems why why ltr systems that's because the output is predictable only when the system is LTI. What I mean, if we know uh, output Y1T for input X1T, we can calculate the output from, for example, 5X1T plus 2X1T plus 3X1T minus 3 plus dot dot. Because the scaling and additivity, scaling, additivity, and TI. So the output is 5Y1T plus 2y1t plus 3y1t minus 3 right and this is our introduction to convolution the output of a system can be calculated by a function of input xt and system function ht ht is a function that contains information about the system ht is called impulse response before demonstrating impulse response, let me explain impulse function first. Impulse function delta t is defined in continuous domain and discrete domain differently. In continuous time domain, impulse function has infinite value on t equals to zero only. Or we can derive from delta triangle t. Delta triangle t has value that one over delta over zero to delta. And if we take limit delta goes to zero and this is delta t in discrete domain impulse function has a value one on n equals to zero only it's very simple an impulse response simply denotes the output of a system when the input is impulse function the output can be calculated from input and impulse response here the function f is the convolution. Convolution is an uh, operation that calculates accumulated reaction. What do you mean? Let me give you an intuitive example first. Here, there is a pillow. Do you know latex pillow? For demonstration, let's assume that this pillow is very specially manufactured, so LTI pillow. When you press this pillow by your finger just one time, then the pillow is pressed and recovers slowly. The point is that the recovering is time consuming. Let's plot the reaction of pillow over time. X axis is time and Y axis is pressed depth. And if I push at time zero, the reaction may be like this. What if I press hard? If I press with double force, the pressed depth will be double, like this. Because the pillow is a linear system. How about this? Press multiple times and 0 second, 1 second, and 2 second. Because of TI, output for pressing at one time is just shifted 1 second and 2 second for third one. And finally, from additivity, sum of the reactions is actual reaction of successive 3 finger pressing. Tossing a stone to the lake is also a good example. If I toss multiple stones, then shaking of wave will be accumulated. So this is convolution. Then, where is the finger pressing is in signal processing. This is impulse function. Note that this is not a value, but a function of time. Now, with the fact that every signal can be expressed by sum of impulse functions, we can drive the formulation of convolution. For example, Let's see a discrete time signal xn, like this, 2, 1, 4. Because delta n is only at only 1 at n equals 0. Uh, this xn can be represented by 2 delta n plus 1 delta n minus 1 plus 
4 delta n minus 2. And using the fact that impulse response Hn is output for delta function. Then the output for this input of LTI system is yn equals to 2hn plus h n minus 1 plus 4 h n minus 2. This scales from scaling property and this shifting is from ti and overall sum is from additivity. In this manner, arbitrarily x1 n can be expressed like x0 delta n plus x1 delta n minus 1 plus dot dot. With summation symbol, simply xn is sum of k is from minus infinity to infinity. And xk delta n minus k. And surprisingly, the output for um, for arbitrary xn is derived simply changing delta to impulse response h. So, conversion formula is like this. With similar manner, arbitrary xt can be expressed with delta functions. For a continuous time derivation, I will use delta triangle t. Explained already. Then xt can be confused like limit of delta goes to zero. X zero delta triangle t delta plus x triangle delta triangle t minus triangle like this. This triangle is used to prevent di diverging the delta triangle function so that it is able to express value over xt correctly. And with summation symbol, we can express like this. And finally, by lima sum, limit sigma is very to integral, as we know. So it's this can be expressed like this. Note that k triangle is converted to tau. And same with discrete time. Changing the delta to h is the output yt. So the conversion in continuous domain is derived. This is the end of the derivation of convolution. Conversion operation use star notation like this. Note that this is possible only, only in LTI system. Finally, let me give you another interpretation of convolution. The last explanation is the interpretation of the convolution in the time domain, t domain. This time I will interpret it in the tau domain, which is the integration domain. In tau domain, this integral is interpreted as the integration of multiplication of impulse response flipped and then shifted and x. That is, xt is replaced by x tau, ht is displaced by h tau, then flipped to h minus tau, and then shifted by t. For example, let's assume xt and ht are given as this. To calculate yt, we should know x tau and ht minus tau, right? And x tau is simply the same to the xt. And ht minus tau can be obtained converting t to the tau and flipping and shifting by t. And multiplication, integration in tau domain makes the output yt. Like this. Okay, 
This is the end of video. If you have any question, please leave a comment.